Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Pema Shuani, and I'm one of the uh, one, one of the assistant professor at neurology and uh, department of neurology and neurosurgery at the University of Cincinnati. And thank you for having me. And uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, the new techniques and new devices that we use for the treatment of the cerebral aneurysm. I don't have any disclosure for this presentation. Okay. You know, like as as we know that. As I think everybody knows, that uh, cerebral aneurysm is a dilation of the wall of the artery. We have uh, two uh, famous forms. Is one of them is a subcular aneurysm, and in the subcular aneurysm, is one like uh, one side of the artery, the wall is weak and it gets uh, growing and it's bulging and it causes the uh, aneurysm. And the other one is the fusiform aneurysm is a dilation of the, the whole artery. And that's uh, also, as you know, like uh, it's uh, another type of the aneurysm. The thing is important about the aneurysm and why everybody is afraid of the aneurysm is when the aneurysm is ruptured and can cause the bleeding. Because when it's uh, aneurysm is ruptured and causes the bleeding, it's going to be one of the worst type of the bleeding in the brain and around like 15 to 20 percent of the people, when they have the subarachnoid hemorrhage, when the aneurysm is ruptured, they cannot get to the hospital. And around two thirds of the patient, after the treatment of the subarachnoid and the finishing the course of the treatment in the hospital, they have some deficit and they need to have the long rehab uh, after the hospital. For this reason, it's very important to find the aneurysm before it's ruptured and treat the aneurysm before it's ruptured. We have two options for the treatment of the aneurysm. One of them is an the open surgery, and most of the time is going to be the clipping. As you see on the uh, top picture, the clip is going to be uh, placed in the neck of the aneurysm to make the aneurysm secure. And then uh, the other like options is the interventional management of the aneurysm, as it's famous from the like uh, surgery from inside. And with a catheter from groin or from the wrist, they, we, we can get access to the artery of the brain and use different devices to treat the aneurysm. One of the main questions that we get always that, you know, like open surgery is better or like uh, surgery from inside. And it's a very bad, great question, but I think the best answer that I always tell to my patients is, you know, like each person and each aneurysm is different. And the way that we manage at UC for any aneurysm, we sit with the surgeon and interventionist as a like as a, a multidisciplinary conference, and we discuss about the risk and benefit of each, each procedure, and we make a decision as a group to go with the open surgery or go with the uh, like uh, surgery from inside. Intervention and management, as Dr. Grossman mentioned, is you know like one of the first management is the coiling that put the wire inside the aneurysm to secure the aneurysm. The other one is the onyx. Is recently probably nobody used the onyx, but that's that's the material they put inside the aneurysm to make the aneurysm secure. Stent assistant coiling is putting the stent to keep the coil inside the aneurysm. Balloon assistant coiling is using the balloon to keep the coil inside the aneurysm to secure the aneurysm. The three new devices that I'm going to talk is one of them is a flow diversion embolization, web device, and pulse rider. These three is the new devices that we can use for the treatment of the aneurysm, and all of them is great. And I'm going to explain the risk, benefit, and how does it work. The flow diverter, you know, like one of the famous flow diverters that's approved in what F, by um, FDA in 2011 is a pipeline. As uh, you can see, that you know, like the pipeline is like the, it's a, like a mesh of the uh, mesh of the, like it's a stent, but it's more coverage of the neck of the aneurysm. And you can see on the images that you know, like you see the aneurysm and you see the pipeline inside the aneurysm. And that pipeline is going to be uh, direct the flow of the blood to pass the aneurysm. And when the flow doesn't go inside the aneurysm, that helps the aneurysm to clog. 
and also help the algorithm to start shrinking and get smaller and smaller and support uh, that weak part of the wall to get uh, healed and then the, uh, the arteries get back to the normal. As you see over here, you know, like we have showing the two different, like three different stents that we use inside the brain, one of the Atlas, Elvis, and Python. As you see on the pipeline on the right side, it has more coverage of the neck of the aneurysm. For this reason, there is less blood going inside the aneurysm and pushing the wall of the aneurysm. For this reason, the wall of the aneurysm is gradually get shrinking over the time and it's become the normal wall. And that's the one of the goal for the treatment with the pipeline. The safety and efficacy of the pipeline, and uh, I'm talking about the pipeline, not other devices or other flow diverter devices. We have two big study about the pipeline, and it shows the risk of like uh, treatment of the aneurysm with the pipeline is around like two to five percent, from the like small like risk to the like uh, big risk, and is overall like two to five percent. And as you see, it's it's very good for the treatment of the aneurysm. And efficacy of the pipeline and flow diverter in five, in, in one year, 80% of the aneurysm, which treated with the pipeline is going to be cured and is going to be gone. And in five years follow-up, it shows like 95% of the aneurysm is cured and is going to be gone. This is the indication that we have for the pipeline. You know, like the pipeline approved for the age of uh, 22 and above, but there are a lot of off-label treatment of the pipeline in the children and has a promising result. For this reason, it's approved for age about 22, but the children also can, we can treat the aneurysm if off-label, but all of the research, all of the data is showing that it's very promising the treatment of the aneurysm in the kids. The aneurysm, though, for most of the time, we use the pipeline for the aneurysm that has a large neck, and the coil or like it's hard to treat with the surgery and you know like the parental uh, wall the parental vessel of the aneurysm should be between two to five millimeters and this is the this is the criteria that we usually use for treatment of the aneurysm with the pipeline this is the real case that you know like you see that huge aneurysm in the left carotid artery on the left side and then one year follow up of the pipeline on the right side images that you can see the aneurysm is gone the artery is back to normal and the great thing about the pipeline is when the artery is back to normal then there is no need for the continuous aspirin or plavix it means that the endothelial of the inner layer of the artery is covering the stent and the stent is going to be part of the wall of the artery and there is no need any take any medication after the aneurysm is gone. For this reason, that's one of the great benefits of the pipeline. This is the images of the pipeline. On the left side, you see that you know, like it's like a pipe, it's a stent, but it's a mesh of the metal, it's covering the neck of the aneurysm. And you can compare the pipeline to the stent, you see how much more coverage you can give to the neck of the aneurysm. On the right side, you can see, on the A images, you can see the flow when it's past the aneurysm. It can push the aneurysm, uh, some of the blood flow go to the aneurysm, push the wall and get expand of the aneurysm or risk of rupture. But on the, on the right side, the B images, you see that the mesh of the stent, stent is covering the neck, the blood flow is passing the aneurysm and the aneurysm gets thrombosed and gradually it's going to shrink and it's going to be cured. And the risk of when it's cured, the risk of like bleeding from that aneurysm is going to be zero. The second device I'm going to call, it's a web embolization device. It's approved in the United States in 2018, but it used to start it said in the Europe, they have been using this device for many years. It's a great device. You can see the picture on the right side. It's a mesh of, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a ball, like mesh of the, like a metal of the ball that, you know, like it's self-expanding mesh of the ball. You put inside the aneurysm and 
most of the time we use for the treatment of the like bifurcation, like in the uh, bifurcation artery, you know, like when the aneurysm, we put inside the aneurysm, the blood flow is going to pass the aneurysm, and then the risk of the bleeding from the aneurysm is going to be like uh, decreased. And uh, usually we can use for the middle cerebral artery bifurcation in the internal carotid artery terminus in the anterior complicating artery and the basilar apex. I'm going to show, you know, like the data about this device. It's it's very easy to deploy. It's one of the easiest, uh, at, uh, I think it's uh, treatment for intervention is for the aneurysm. And as you can see, it shows a 96% successful, technical successful in the data. The risk of the procedure, the mor morbidity and mortality of the procedure in 12 months is less than 2%. That's a great result. Around 80% of the uh, people who get treatment for the with the web uh, web, web device, its aneurysm is secure and it's gone in 12 months. And less than 7% of the people, they need to read treatment. As you see on the picture, you see the shape of the shape of the device. There are two shapes, and you can see on the top right, you see that the uh, device is placed inside the aneurysm. The good, the good thing, you know, it's uh, support the wall, and also it's like the, it's a direct the flow away from the wall of the aneurysm. On the below images, you can see that, you know, the web, uh, you see the aneurysm, then you see that the catheter, uh, like, enter into the aneurysm, and the web was placed. For this reason, the blood flow is going to pass the aneurysm and the aneurysm is going to get secure. This is the real case that you know one of my friends did and they, 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 they treat the aneurysm for less than 30 minutes. You see that the basilar artery, you see the top of the basilar, you see the ball and you see the bulging, it's aneurysm. You see that the web device is deployed and the follow up one year, you, you see the web device, but you don't, you don't see the aneurysm. And it means the aneurysm is secure. There is no blood going inside the aneurysm to cause the problem. The last device that I'm going to talk is a pulse rider. This pulse rider also is like approved in the United States in around like 2018. It's it's a it's a med, it's a, it's a device that's supporting the coil to stay inside the aneurysm for bifurcation or aneurysm. It's, we can use it, and it's an easy device to deploy. And it's much more like you don't need to patient doesn't need to be on aspirin flat plavix for a long time after deploying the, this device. As I said, it's good for the basilar terminus and carotid terminus. The risk of the procedure data show is less than 3%. And then 80% of the time, the aneurysm after one year is cured and doesn't need to do any more procedure. This is the picture, schematic picture of the pulse rider. You see that, you know, like the pulse rider placed over the neck of the aneurysm because of the neck of the aneurysm is wide. For this reason, the pulse rider helped to coil stay inside the aneurysm and we quit coil the packed aneurysm. The good thing about those new devices, it's safe, it's fast deploying, and also it's the patient when they come to the hospital, it's the patient is going to stay in the hospital just for one day after the procedure, and they can go walk home uh, after one day, go home and walk at home, and they go home without any like complication. And but as I said, the the, the question is open surgery or like surgery from inside. I think the best thing is uh, multidisciplinary talk with the interventionist, with the surgeon and see which procedure has less uh, risk and that's the best procedure for the treatment of the aneurysm. Thank you so much for having me. Thank I'm you, Dr. Sharani. We have uh -huh. a couple of questions I'd like to pose to you quickly if you, sure. if you have a moment. Uh, yes, one sure. goes back to uh, when you were discussing the pipeline, and the question is, what keeps the pipeline in place? You know, the pipeline is the same as a stem, and you know, when we when we put the pipeline over the neck of the aneurysm, stay, and you know, like it's going to be against the wall of the artery, 
and it's going to stay over there. And it's going to be divert the flow for this season. There is no flow going inside the aneurysm. Aneurysm is going to shrink. And the good news is, you know, like a pipeline is after, like when the aneurysm is gone, there is no, no other medication patient need to take. And the pipeline is going to be part of the artery and the artery is going to be that weak part of the artery that causes the aneurysm is going to be like back to normal. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thank you. And you know, like right now I can say, you know, like, because the place that I train is the person invent the pipeline is the King Nelson and I train under him. And the pipeline, I think right now is more than, I think like more than 300,000 people in the world that couldn't get any treatment before the pipeline is, uh, right now is the aneurysm secure for those people. Well, that's, that's good news. Um, Another question, uh, and then we'll move on to Dr. Smith, is can you comment on the pros and cons of using different levels of sedation during angiograms and endovascular procedures? For example, no sedation, light sedation, and totally asleep. You know, like it's, it's depends to the what type of the procedure that we do. You know, like most of the time for the diagnostic angio, with the light sedation is enough because we can communicate with the patient and ask the patient to hold the breathing. Mm -hmm. But some of the big procedure like the treatment of the aneurysm or pipeline or like any like treatment, most of the time when we go inside the brain, it's a deep sedation, like general anesthesia is required because, because we are working in the tiny small artery inside the brain. And you know, like any movement of the patient, it's risky for this reason. Most of the time for big procedure, patient need to be on the general anesthesia. But for the like diagnostic angio or like very like sometimes way for quad stand when we are not inside the brain because we are dealing with the bigger artery, just like mild sedation, I think is enough. Okay, thank you very much. You're um, welcome. Dr. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here.